April 16, uh, 2020, and it is the third episode of the English Club meeting. Uh, we are happy to we are happy to meet uh, Alisa, uh, Russia. We are happy to meet Caroline, uh, South Africa, Cape Town. We are happy to meet Batato, South Africa, Cape Town, who also has his birthday today. And oh. yeah, happy so happy, happy birthday. birthday! Thank you, hey. thank you, happy man. Birthday. You're 16 today, man. Cheers. Thanks a lot, man. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, uh, my, oh my! <laughs> you prepare for yourself, man. No, I didn't prepare no. anything, man. <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, and <laughs> and finally, finally we have v Vadim, uh, who is uh, from Russia, Krasnoyarsk. Yes, that's what we have. Um, and uh, well, I also don't think that we should have any specific topic today because um, we have quite a nice combination of uh, countries, and I, I thought we could just be asking questions and uh, just getting to know each other. So that's the thing. Um, okay. Who would like to begin with any questions? Actually, I think we should um, ask something, uh, ask Batato something about his uh, mood and uh, his uh, his his day, because a birthday in quarantine is not is not maybe the most exciting thing. Mm, about the birthday, man, it's something important in life to have a birthday, but also. What I can say, thanks to God, man, to get this kind of day today. Most of people right now, this kind of situation we are in now, times will never get it into my birthday. And luckily, I'm still safe. I'm still inside the house. I can say thank you to God to keep me alive until now for this special day of 2016 April to see my birthday again, man. I'm so glad for this question. And you know me, man. You know me. I know. I know. I'm yeah. so glad, man. <laughs> I still I still remember your, lot, I, I still remember your composition that that uh, that you wrote about your life story. It was such a such a privilege to read it. And uh, yeah, how is uh, I remember you were working. Uh, so what is what is your job now? Uh, be right now, be before the quarantine. Right now, I was still doing Uber. Okay. But right now, I'm not working for this kind of situation of Corona. They say, take care of yourself, man. Be safe. If you want to be at home, I know we need to catch all of us, but sometimes you have to be at home, man. I'm only one person. I'm so with, with me to get that sickness. I can infect also other people to put other people in risk, and we have to be so careful. Some people they, they take for advantage because it's not yet in their town, but it's a really serious sickness, man. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, Caroline, are you also sitting at home? I'm also sitting at home. Um, yes, I, it's quarantine. They say um, we've got the strictest lockdown in the world. Is this correct? That's what they say. Um, they're looting the bottle stores. I don't know what you call bottle stores in Russia, but there's no drinking, no smoking. <laughs> they're selling cigarettes for huge fortunes. Um, I'm lucky I did give up smoking, but <laughs> anyway, the, the, they're sort of hijacking bottle stores and there's all sorts of things going on. But Kate, have you, they, they say that we've got the strictest quarantine in the world, right? Well, it sounds like you have the toughest quarantine in the world. I mean, looting is really becoming bad, right? I, I heard that uh, all the shops in the townships are now being looted. So how bad is that? Um, I think Batata is more apt. Are you, do you live in a township? Where do you I live? live? In Met, I live in Midland. Oh, right. Near me. Fairly. Yeah, but it's true. It's not easy. It was happened. It's happened some, it's a few kilometers from where I am, about 15 k from where I am. It was almost four. It was in the strand. And uh, Elsis River, the place called Defty, some other town there in Nyanga. It's true, it's happening, and it's real bad, man. It's real bad. And I don't know how can people are going to go looting some beer, alcohol, more than praying for this sickness to be finished. They are busy going to break some alcohol shop. That is so bad, man, to hear about this kind of news. I'm so disappointed, man. 
Um, and the police are not very good either. It's our policemen who've been caught with lots of alcohol. Police? Um, yeah. Our police, yes. There have been quite a few incidences of that, I must say. So can you safely go yeah. to, the, to the shop to buy some grocery or whatever, or do you have to order delivery? No, we can go to the shops. We're allowed out to go to the shops to buy food and only essentials, chemist stuff and food at this point. We, we had a lockdown that was going on going to be three weeks and today's our, thir- our we should be the end, but we've got another two weeks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we can, we can oh. go and get um, groceries, food you, and chemist. You can, you're allowed to. Yes, uh-huh. yes. Okay. But is, is it safe? I mean, uh, can you meet criminals uh, on, the, on your way or in your district it is pretty, pretty fine? Um, they say that, you know, there are quite a few desperate people. Um, I do walk. I've got, but I've, my neighbourhood seems safe, um, and I feel safe. Um, but I don't think it's all areas. And but no, part I, of your area, Maitland, how safe I'm do sorry, you feel? In my in my area also is safe, no problem. But some other area in township is like there's no there's no corona man, it's normal man. I just I drive pass by in township. I see a lot of people having some funny playing the kids in the street. It's like they don't feel like this sickness is real serious. That I was so I feel so bad, man. So shocked when I see people playing the street, and some parents leave their child playing outside. And this kind of, of sickness is not only in South Africa or all in the Africa; is everywhere around the world. And there's something which is serious. But some parents they take it for advantage. That's the problem. You cannot send your child outside and go and play. There are people still playing outside until yeah. now. Don't you think? I think it's quite difficult because some people live in very small housing. So it's, you know, five people in a room. I think it's very um, challenging that. That is true. That is very challenging because some people are living in a small room, five people, six people. It's tough. But no matter that, if you are sitting in one room, we have to be inside. There is TV, man. We have to be yeah. inside, outside, still in front of your house, but not to leave your children to go to play outside the neighbor. You don't know what you're gonna get that side, and it can come and affect the other people. That is so bad. I will say, I walked down to my, my my close shops, which is just a block away, to get the groceries, and um, all the shop assistants are just about sharing cigarettes, sitting close together on the sidewalk. <laughs> it looks very sunny and happy, but I see that too. Mm-hmm. Alyssa, you had something to say? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, we are allowed now to walk with our children, like children are allowed and mothers uh, are allowed, but they should keep distance about three meters away from each other. And we are now allowed to do sports uh, in the streets, for example, um, but um, without touching anything, I mean uh, special equipment for taking sports. Uh, we are allowed to go to the nearest shops and pharmacies. Uh, I mean, um, food shops. Alicia, and, uh, uh, oh. how do, for interruption. How do you understand uh, that uh, you can uh, do sport without any any inventories? What no, do you mean? I mean by... uh, street equipment. Like uh, you can do like this. Pull ups. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This. yeah. Is it co- is it pro- uh, permitted to do it? Or uh, it's prohibited. Or yeah. Or if I uh, would like to play football and uh, bring some uh, ball on the street. Is it? But you, uh, but you touch it with your legs. Uh, yes. It's uh, more important to touch, not to touch uh, every uh, anything using your hands. Like, oh. or if you touch, for example, uh, today uh, I have uh, ordered uh, coffee, so and um, something for cooking coffee at home and macaron uh, and. Um, just um, um, I uh, have chosen uh, delivery not to my, just directly to my flat, but to my uh, yard, uh, to our yard. Uh, and the weather was so nice; it was like I was lucky to <laughs> go out from home uh, for uh, for a minute, okay. But I walk um, 
not gloves, but special equipment here for my hands to keep dig, them safe. Dig, the, dig my uh, foot there, yeah, in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I just, uh, my friend uh, from rostov on uh said to me, just walk a bit, walk a bit, and I really walked just to the nearest, uh, um, like a tra to, the, to the nearest trash trash bin to uh, throw my coffee away no, <laughs> when I to throw this glass of coffee away to throw it because the weather was very nice and um, sometimes we all need just to let our hair down to relax a bit and the air is good it's, it's better air than uh, earlier. Excellent. Today's air is excellent. In comparison, even uh, with uh, another days before, but today is very fresh. <clears throat> let's and, let's uh, compare. Let's compare. Not now today it's uh, nine degrees centigrade in Krasnoyarsk. What is the weather in uh, Cape Town? Um, but Tata, what I think I looked. I don't know what it's. It said eighteen. Was that centigrade or Fahrenheit? I don't even know. <laughs> what would eighteen be? The words are, I, I didn't check today, man. Yeah, and it's it's a, it's a beautiful day. It's, it's it's very so. Eighteen would that be Fahrenheit or centigrade? Yeah. I don't even know. I just it is cool because it also it's eighteen, but all in the morning it was a little shower like raining. Okay. But right now the sun is out and it's getting home really. Mm. It's not bad. The weather is good. It's also fresh. It's quite be, sunny. Yes. That is true. Yeah. And we still have snow. I mean, uh, it's spring. It's the middle of on spring. Uh, yeah, Where? but what uh, uh, in uh, in the in, uh, on the mountains? I mean, I can see. Uh, I have understood. <laughs> Stop, yes. No, uh, Stolbe, no? Stolbe. Uh, I can see ah. Stolbe from my window. So uh, Stolbe is Lucky our you. national park, uh, the the pillars we call them in, in 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 English, but in Russian it is Stolbe. It's kind of a national reserve with lots of trees and some mountains which people oh. use to hike and to trek. So we uh, have the middle of spring, but it is still quite cold. I mean, compared to Cape Town, because you have the middle of ah. autumn. And you have 18 degrees, so <laughs> which is quite a yes. funny thing to, to realize. And um, I should notice, uh, so uh, a bit, a bit uh, addition. I should notice that there were just a, a few people, quite a few. Uh, I have on, seen only one woman walking with her dog, uh, and she was far, far away from me. There are really not a lot of people, but a lot of cars because. Uh, all people uh, now are sitting at home. <clears throat> um, can I ask you a question, Lisa? How long is your um, quarantine for? How long is much? How much? How long have you been in it, and how much longer do you have to go in it? So uh, a month, about a month ago, we had um, um, an order, like an order, to uh, have distance learning. To have distance learning, we uh, started to have distance learning. Then, uh, in a week, we started to, to have uh, self-isolation regime, or in a week or two weeks. In a week, we just had recommendations, but then um, the week has uh, the week passed, and uh, we were told uh, to um, uh, leave under the regime of uh, self-isolation. Like Moscow, so Moscow did first, uh, and then other regions um, uh, considered this opportunity and uh, took it into account as well. Right. Okay. Thank yes. you. But Ada, by the way, I will eat chocolate bite for your birthday. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you <laughs> very much, man. Thanks a lot, really. Wow, <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> I'm now down on uh, sweets, but. Uh, for this day, I will, for this uh, perfect meeting, I will eat it. Yeah, could Thanks, I just... Man, but yes, I'm so happy to hear that. I'm glad, man, for birthday today, 16. I'm so... Life is not easy, man. Life is not easy. Not only in Africa, whatever in South Africa. It's everywhere, everywhere around the world. Right now, this moment, the economy, everything will be down a little. But let's not give, let's not give up, man. We have to keep in focus and take care of ourselves we must follow the rules 
we know we are not perfect, but people, they are better also to, they say, so the president, we have to obey them. And I can advise some other people who they are outside there to make sure to take care of themselves. Life is too short, we live once, but we can take long more, but depend how you take care of yourself. My mama there, she been there for a long, she's all of us all here, she can give us the secret what she's using to be, to be so, to, to take long in this world, what is she eating, all this, she must give you good advice. She, I can see my mama here, I put nice sunglasses. She look like 18 years old. And I look, <laughs> I, <laughs> and I'm, I'm young, most, I'm, I'm still a small boy, but she's look like 18 years old. She must give us a secret to what she do. When I put on my sunglasses, I look like I'm 30 years old. You see, I'm telling not, you. you not, see put... not 15, but I... But not I'm... 15. She but looks I'm like old. you're younger than us. <laughs> you look gorgeous, so there we go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to find my sunglasses, but uh, okay. I don't remember where they are. So while Alessia is, finding, uh, is looking for sunglasses, I just want to take a moment to say hello to the chat because we have some people who are watching us. So hello, uh, Wonder Cat, hello, Future Learner, and hello, Three Cats. And uh, so you, you, Batato, have also two congratulations from the chat about your birthday. Thank you. Uh, yeah, one person even uh, gave up a French lesson to come and listen to us, to our conversation. Yes. Uh, Batato, there is a question for you. Have you ever seen... No this, problem. Have you ever seen snow? Hey. Yeah, uh, there is a connection problem. So, have you ever seen snow? You are cutting. Can we repeat again the question? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, I did. I did see snow. Okay. Yeah, I did see snow. Some like the, the place where I used to drive. When I'm driving, I go to to Johannesburg. The place they call in Wolomo. There are more places where it's cold, like in Pumalanga, the place called Andrina is in Pumalanga in South Africa. It's a real cold, man. Sometimes you can wait, you can just try to in the morning to start your car. Believe me, the car cannot start. We, use, we have to put a small fan under the under the car for the oil to be soft again because even oil gets dry in the engine. Mm. Yes, I did so snow. Okay, okay. Uh Caroline, what about you? Have you seen snow? Yes, I have seen snow. Um I have seen it in, I used to, I was born in Johannesburg and it wasn't a, a, a common event. It was the most, we were all, they declared it a national a, a holiday at school. We all were allowed to go home because it was such an unusual thing that it snowed. We were all sent home to play in the snow. It was so exciting. You know, it only didn't snow every year there. But then I lived in Canada for seven years. So I saw a lot of snow. Canada, seven years. That's a lot. Yes. Yes, in Toronto. Oh, there is a lot of people who are now going to Toronto or to, to Canada, not only to Toronto, but to Canada to work there, to study there. Do you think it is a good place uh, for people to to settle down? Um, you know, I was very happy there. Um, I was I, I went there due to the, uh, my husband who got it. He's in the film industry and it was it was boom time film industry so he got a good job and I had young children I was really happy there um, it was quite a difficult time in South Africa due to sort of apartheid and it was um, not a you know not good times and it was really a wonderful experience going to uh, Toronto and um, feeling safe it, it felt safer and um, it was a lovely experience but I was happy to get home I think we all have a thing about home maybe most of us a lot of us I'm not sure about now. I haven't been to, I have friends that never came back and they do get homesick. But I think uh, work-wise, it, it does seem to be better for them in the film business, certainly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you told me that your, there's, your, your, there's, your husband worked with Russia, with the Russians uh, that was also connected to film industry. Yes, all connected to the film industry. He went to Russia. Um, and yes, so that's why he said Andy, he heard Andy on, on um, tape 
And he said, oh, he's got a very refined accent, very refined English accent. So I had to tell that because I've played the, the tech. <laughs> uh, yes, he's, he's been to, and he's worked with Russians in South Africa too, on commercials. Mm -hmm. Well, that's with tea commercials. Plenty, very, plenty, yes. plenty of international experience. When I was in Cape Town, I saw Lipton tea, which was, uh, the package was written in Russian. And uh, so it was one surprising fact. Then uh, it was produced in Saudi Arabia or in the uh, uh, Arab Emirates. Uh, and then the brand is British. And... Uh, it was sold in Cape Town in South Africa. And I was like, what, what is happening with this tea? I mean, why, <laughs> why, do, why does it take so much, uh, so many countries to produce it and to brand it? Because I it's know. a, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. What, 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 what was uh, it? Maybe some misfunction with my microphone. No, 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 it's fine. Know. It's fine. I can, I can hear you. Just what's the matter? This one, two, three, or oh, this one, two, three. I mean, no difference. I just, uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a great microphone. Actually, you're talking about globalization, I think. Okay. Uh, they produce in one place and for another. And uh, the, uh, the owner of the brand, uh, I mean, uh, it might be the Chinese, Ch Chinese people, and uh, who knows. But today, in, uh, in uh, the era of uh, virus, I think it's a very we have a, a very hard time uh, and uh, global globalization uh, was hit by this uh, event and I don't know I was how thinking it exactly be. that yeah I was thinking exactly that mm -hmm. yes and I don't know uh, from one uh, side uh, we have uh, uh, a cleaner air even in Krasnoyarsk in China wherever. Uh, I um, heard about dolphin which uh, appeared in Venus. It's very, very uh, extraordinary uh, event. But uh, economy uh, suffers and uh, will suffer, I, I suspect, in future. And what's the best? Uh, uh, how we can uh, manage it? And maybe we, we have a, a better ecology. But uh, uh, I think the level of life will uh, drop down, uh, maybe a little bit, maybe um, more, I don't know. But I think uh, it's uh, a very big challenge for globalization and for organization, our economy and global economy. Uh, I don't know what will happen. What do you think about it? What's we have now globalization. We have yes, now, we, our, our globalization hasn't suffered yet. Yes, but it, it have done be, uh, before the virus era. But, uh, but you know, uh, that Chinese factories are now starting to work. And uh, their air, yes, uh, is much more clean in Krasnodar, but not at all. My mom still, my mom has to work and she says not very much. <laughs> But you know, actually, all technologies uh, which we will have uh, was made were made in uh, in the past, and um, uh, the uh, how to say the rate of uh, improvement uh, starts to slow down. And uh, I don't know uh, how much uh, it will uh, be uh, how much it will harm. Uh, we will receive harm. I don't know, but. Um, I think, uh, in a way, it's a um, positive uh, side. We can uh, reorganize our way of thinking, uh, economy, uh, relationship between people. And um, I think it's, it's a very interesting uh, time to reconsider our relationship even with nature, because uh, it matters a lot. Maybe it's because of our relationship with nature we, uh, we have got this virus. I, I uh, absolutely, so you are dead right, I absolutely agree. There is a version that this virus, um, so that uh, the nature just uh, has been tired of us. That's why uh, this virus has appeared. Uh, because mm -hmm. people cannot um, create viruses now. The medicine is not on such level. 
You, we can think uh, whatever, but um, you know, actually, uh, there is a, some ecology relationship between uh, species, and uh, the humankind uh, tends to uh, invade in these relationships and uh, break them. Because of that, uh, we um, destroy or um, destroy balance between uh, these relationships, and. Uh, uh doing that we um how to say summon this virus in a way i think summoned and uh because of that it appears if we uh, just... don't invade in in many spheres in uh, don't eat the animals andrew I no, mean, it's not it's about. Your, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to propagate this now. I'm. I'm I, I wanted to object. <laughs> no, like uh, <laughs> the, Ch the Chinese uh, have always been uh, have always uh, been eating uh, these bats, and uh, yes, there are some versions. There are a lot of versions, uh, but now um, recently there has been news about uh, this virus, so it can be. Uh, produ not produced, but uh, so people can uh, be infected uh, by contacting with homeless dogs. Uh, I was about to check uh, if this news fake or not, because in Krasnoyarsk we have a lot of problems. We have a lot of ab abandoned dogs. We have uh, this yeah. uh, awful problem because people, especially who live in uh, mm, so suburb, uh, they um, get rid of dogs. Uh, we have uh, not a lot of uh, places where such dogs can be, uh, can live. Uh, and um, so this is very sad. Uh, that's why uh, I wanted to check this news, if it is fake or not, because there was a name of a scientist from, Can scientist from Canada. Uh, and if uh, such scientist doesn't exist, or it is not his field of... Um, research it will be very uh, understandable that uh, this news uh, uh, was made uh, due to some um, uh, order <laughs> yes Propaganda. because um, medusa uh, yesterday released uh, uh, news about uh, creation of fake um, by uh, ria news mm -hmm. they uh, created a fake uh, that boris johnson was connected to um, uh, to this uh, when I don't remember uh, Lan uh, uh, how it's called this um, special equipment. I have just uh, read this today. Well, connected to ventilation equipment. to ventilation to ventilation. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ventilation. <laughs> well, yes, lung ventilation. Anyway, I wouldn't I wouldn't believe anything that Russian mass media says because I mean it's not even like they create news because they create news. I mean that's that's their that's their job. And uh, reading something in Russian is kind of uh, pretty. I think. Uh, I mean, you have to check it immediately in English. If the, if there is nothing in English, then probably it's something like uh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. This this is how uh, I don't know whether, like, I checked the news about the Turkish president um, has given uh, his salary for the last seven months to the medicine to mm -hmm. kill coronavirus. And I saw this news only into um, media and uh, they were not very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, this media uh, is just uh, so they just do copyright no okay. more. Let's let's just a bit not go too, too, too far too, too far into mass media uh, conversation because we were talking about uh, nature so uh, I just wanted to to comment uh, for, first of all I have to say hello to uh, well man how should I introduce you by your real name or by your nickname uh, by by my real name Nubsebut <laughs> Nubsebut is here uh, guys Costa, come on can you please use can you can you stop using your mask because it's the sound is very bad. Yeah, it was the idea, you know. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate. It. Yeah. So this is Constantino uh, or just Costa. Uh, welcome, yeah. welcome to the conversation. Um, Hello. Hi. Yeah, we have uh, Vadim, we have Batato, 
we have Caroline, we have Costa now, and we have Alessia. Uh, and uh, Vadim, I wanted just to answer your uh, comment commentary about nature. So I was reading this uh, Professor Peterson, Canadian psychologist, psychiatrist, and so on, and he was saying that actually nature is our danger. I mean, we are not destroying nature. Nature is destroying us because we are small. Uh, like one tsunami and we have one country minus. Uh, if there is a gigantic uh, cyclone in the USA, the whole state can be obliterated. If a volcano erupts, uh, it's uh, like one, ci one city is destroyed. One virus and we have already had two million uh, people uh, fallen ill. So, I mean, nature is fine. I mean, now you see uh, wild animals are taking back their places in the city, forests are uh, growing, and if one building is ab uh, abandoned, then uh, it's, it's, it's quickly covered in, uh, in trees. Oh, what I want to say is that nature is fine. We, cannot, we are too weak to do anything to nature. Nature is going Actually, to, to I, screw I, us very I badly. Say, excuse me for yeah. the interruption. I, I wanted to say that not about nature uh, in the world. I mean relationship, ecology. I don't think that you will uh, argue with the fact that we are the species who uh, change environment uh, more than another uh, known species. Okay. And so, uh, uh, we, uh, like, um, I, 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 I've said that we destroy uh, relationships between uh, another species and our species and uh, the other species. And in this uh, thing, of course, we are part of the nature, and uh, uh, we can do nothing because we are part. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A, a second. Uh, first of all, Kostya, could you please turn off vibration on your phone? I think it was some vibration from your phone. Was it? It's the sounds of nature. <laughs> no, it's it was it, it, it was it was vibration. So please turn off all all the vibration because vibration really. Uh, destroys the recording quality. And uh, Vadim, you, I think you were using a different... I don't know, I... Yes? I didn't have actually any vibration. Are you sure? You know. Well, maybe, maybe it wasn't it wasn't you, but I just hear some strange cracking sounds. Uh, okay. Probably from Vadim, I think. I, 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 I still feel, I sit still absolutely. I even uh, don't breathe. Okay. <laughs> no, please breathe. <laughs> don't want you to die. So... Uh, <laughs> You, are, are you still using your phone to talk? Yes. All right. Okay. So, please. So so, it has just hit me. Like, if uh, uh, human beings uh, uh, are about to die like dinosaurs and just nature will produce another <coughs> kind of creatures. And um, so, do you remember there, as I'm writing diploma about ecology, theme and media. So, uh, do you remember when in your society, uh, there was um, uh, there were uh, there were experiments to change the uh, directions of rivers. People were trying to do it, Stalin ordered to do it, uh, and nothing has happened. Uh, nature didn't want to change. The rivers should be the rivers, like where they are placed, and that's why I agree with Andy. Like we are too weak. To, they, they, uh, uh, they did not do it actually. There, can you tell me about examples about uh, one river? They turned its uh, direction. Uh, they haven't turned. Uh, they did it because uh, it was impossible. I should check, but it's a very famous case. I have. I, I just um, read uh, about this during one of my courses. Uh, it um, this information was revealed after USSR collapsed. I, I yeah. know, but in, if you want to uh, tell us that example, I, I think uh, example should be. Uh, completed. I mean, if they turn the river and nothing will happen, or they tried to turn, but uh, it uh, it didn't um, uh, come true. But you know, actually, there, I want to um, uh, tell you about uh, Baikal Lake, and there is a. It's actually it starts to uh, starts to dying because 
uh, a lot of uh, uh, hydro stations near Baikal. Uh, um, actually, uh, the, it was from Mongolia. I mean, uh, they built uh, Mongolia built some uh, cascade of uh, hydro stations, and because of that, the uh, floor of uh, fresh water to Baikal uh, dramatically decreased. And we have uh, a consultation with Mongolian government to um, sell uh, our electric energy to them, uh, lest uh, they uh, don't uh, build another hydro station. If they uh, build it uh, more, Baikal will be uh, dead in decades, I think. Could we maybe come back to more international things? I mean, because Baikal, Mongolia... Russian mass media is slightly more about Russia than about South Africa and uh, might be not as... No, as... That, uh, our uh, particip uh, part participants, our guests uh, don't know about uh, Baikal. Baikal is a famous lady. Okay, think. let's check. Oh, Batata, really? do, do you know Baikal? No, I don't. Do you, hmm? Batata? Hello? Uh -huh. do, do you know what is Baikal Lake? By calling. Now you can let me know. Okay. Now and, you can explain to me. And Caroline, you've heard of Baikal? No, I haven't actually. So I'd also like to hear. So that's what I'm actually, saying, Baikal guys. You, you, I, ju just a second. So uh, you should. Th that's something about Russian mentality. In Russia, we all think that everyone knows about Russia and about us and about our geography, political life, our our like daily routine. Not no. Uh, Baikal the biggest lake with uh, uh, unsalted water the deepest yeah that's exactly that's not exactly what i'm saying are... exactly what i'm saying no. the deepest the biggest the freshest the best the most amazing that's our In country Russia, yeah. that's our country Russia. that's why we know it there are waterfalls that we know nothing of we, there are rivers we know nothing of there are forests we know nothing of <laughs> so i mean that's why you should kind of take heed of the fact that international things are more welcome because because you can't talk about local things if we have international uh, guests. Uh, that's that's the point. So you will be surprised how little people know about Russia and how little we know about other countries. So, uh, so basically, it's it's the deepest and uh, it's the deepest lake uh, in a, the world. It's a uh, actually it's a, a biggest lake with unsalted water. It's the, it's the biggest uh, natural reserve of unsalted water in the world. I don't think that uh, uh, it's a, a, a local thing. It's international, uh, you know. And uh, I think uh, uh, I it will be interesting say. to know about it. And I well, object you. uh, your comment, Andrew. I just, because no. it's not it's Russia. Russia, it's not local, you know. It's not patriotic uh, statement. It actually, uh, it's a natural object, you know. Uh, it's the biggest lake. Uh, with fresh, uh, unsalted water all the world. I know a lot of things about Africa, maybe not uh, in comparison uh, with our guests, but I think it's important to know this uh, lake. And why don't we uh, mention it in our conversation? And all? Uh, anyway, okay. thank Let you. Me... I, enjoyed, I enjoyed hearing about it. And I, I don't like to emphasize it, it uh, completely and talk it about but... two hours, but I think it's it's uh, worse to uh, it's worse to talk about it at least several minutes. <laughs> of course, oh, yes. Let me it. let thank me you. let me explain what I what I mean to, to say. I mean, just don't assume. I mean, that's that's not that I'm saying it to anyone directly, but it's just a rule of think. If you if you go to other countries which are very distant, you quickly learn that you shouldn't assume that everyone knows something about your country. And that's why, yes, you can tell and probably you should tell because people are interested naturally, uh, especially if they're on this call. But assuming that people know this, this is wrong. I mean, this is like, first you have to verify that, like, are we actually talking about the same thing? Are we actually talking about the thing that we all know here? And then we can proceed into a deeper conversation. If we haven't checked this yet, then uh, it's kind of impolite. That's what, that, so, like, this is here, my point. Uh, uh, now, the, our international guests know a bit more about Russia. Uh, secondly, so um, I agree with uh, 
I again agree with Andy because mostly foreigners know about uh, uh, Baikal when they come to Russia and they hear it and like, wow, I want to visit. Do you know how to visit Baikal, Lake Baikal? So, okay, uh, our international guests, what do you know about Russia? <laughs> Uh, uh, Patrick, so I you answer that first. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, asking. Like, it's, it's just, you know, it's just opinions. I'm now curious. What, uh, what have you heard about our no, country? No, it's okay. I can answer. I can answer you that question. What uh, I know about Russia, I can say most of the time. Yes, Carolina. Let me answer. Uh, Russia. I don't know much about Russia. It's something like you have to say and they say. Media always lie. Some they always show the bad place of Russia. They don't show a good side of Russia. And what people are gonna know a lot of Russia. Some people are say Russia is cold, is what I know Russia is a far far place in the world. And I never been there. But what I know about Russia most of the time is all that is snow. Is what I know. I know only Russia is hot is cold. It's not easy to be hot. That is what I know about Russia. About other stuff about lake, yes. That lake about salt. Now you explain to me. I hear about lake. <laughs> I hear about lake before, but I never know if it's in Russia. I hear all the biggest lake in 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 the world, which got a, a lot of salt. I don't know. Now I can hear is Russia. I, I never know about it. But much most of the time I don't know much about Russia. Maybe I will know about Russia while we are together right now. And yeah. talking, the more you are speaking, the more I'm getting something now about Russia. Um, hello? Yes. No. Can you hear us now? Um, uh, so, Elisa, I know I've never been to Russia, but I've heard little bits. My daughter's been to Russia. Um, she's been to Moscow. I think that was the, the only, she's around, the only place she's been to. She loves Russia. She loves the literature. You've got great writing that comes out of, um, out of Russia. She, um, I remember her saying she went to Moscow and she was quite surprised that in a major city, um, she had to learn how to, to work, to read Russian in, in the metros. And the metros are very beautiful. That's, I've seen beautiful pictures of your um, undergrounds. Beautiful, gosh. Um, but, but you speak your language in Moscow a lot. Am I right? That's according to my daughter. You, you, you don't, like a lot of other cities, speak a lot of English. You, you speak Russian. That's what I gathered. Yes, uh, quite a few people, uh, especially in regions, uh, know Russian, so uh, no um, English. I'm sorry, but uh, uh, I should know. I should mention that Saint Petersburg and Moscow, according to foreigners' opinion, that uh, have been to Krasnoyarsk, um, Moscow and Saint Petersburg are not cities that uh, represent Russia, uh, because you may see a lot of Europe because they are the most uh, developed. Once and uh, a lot of foreigners like uh, <clears throat> Siberia and being here, studying here, and in Norilsk, even the uh, the coldest city probably in our country. I remember Andy telling me that. <laughs> oh, Norilsk, one more city. Yeah. So you uh, have introduced our culture. <laughs> uh, well, when I was asked. Uh... Not the vice versa thing. Uh, Kostya, there was a question for you. Uh, are you here? And he, and he unfortunately left. <laughs> it at least turned off the camera. Okay, that's quite a pity. Um, could we maybe ask something about South Africa in return? I mean, we were talking about Russia, then let's have a responding question oh, but Tati, you go first <laughs> uh, uh, tell uh, a random a random fact about south africa yeah just tell us something interesting Man, i'm sure carolina is a good place to answer that question uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a very difficult question um i have a question uh, what religion do you have in South Africa? We have many religions. We have a Christian. Um, we have Muslim. Um, Christian, Muslim. Those are the two that come to mind. Batata, what others do we have? 
Jewish, Jewish. Yes. We have a Jew, the Jewish we religion, Jewish, of course. We got, it's got a lot of, um, so this is Africa, man. Africa is the first one to the religion. When we come to religion, there's thousands of religion hmm. around the global. <laughs> but in Africa, I cannot just say in Africa, in South Africa, I can compare all, everywhere in Africa. To religion, I can see where a lot of religion. I cannot tell how many we've got. But hey, this is Africa. If you know Bible little, I'm sure you can be a pastor too. Now I can For bring case, my own so church now. So, uh, huh? what, is the, what is the most spread religion? What is the most, like, n not popular, but spread? First, so, in, in uh, South Africa, what is the most spread? Uh, what religion is spread most? You know, I haven't looked at Patata, you can correct me, but the three that uh, that I, I meet the most of, and I, so I might be meet, not meeting, is um, Muslim, um, Jewish, and, and Christian. What have I missed? Out? There are others, of course, there's, um, but they're on a smaller basis. I think Buddhism, yes, um, Rastafarianism, what religion is that called? But on, that's on a smaller scale. To me, the main ones are Christian, Jewish, and Muslim. Am I right? Or, that or not? That is true. That is... It's the only one. That is all the Christian, Muslim, and Jews. That is the biggest one. Here. Those are the biggest ones, but we have examples on a smaller level of others. Those also small, and they can say, it's a little, it's, they are all Christian men. They are all Christian, but they are small, they are too many, you cannot tell. They are too many. So what I know is all the Christian, Muslim, and Jews. That's what people I know most of the time. Because I don't have the, this religion, this religion, you can write down until when you are tired. A lot, but what I believe is only Muslim, Christian, and Jewish. That one, I can't give you a statistic. Sorry, um, Elisa, I don't know the statistics, but uh, those three seem to be the biggest. Hmm. That the, is true. There oh, is, thank you. Anyway, I would like uh, I had a conversation to yesterday about religion, and uh, I, I'm just curious now. Alisa, your acoustics has changed what happened. Because uh, my uh, phone uh, has low battery and I changed my earphone. Bad idea. I just ten percent and uh, do you have I will change your. Do, do you have a charger? I mean, can you connect it now? Because it's quite impossible. It's such an uh, echoing okay. thing. Okay. And uh, there, there is a question on the chat. Actually, two. One question is, what are the sites in, uh, what are the sites in Cape Town and uh, something about penguins maybe. So uh, let's begin. What are, uh, what are the some, what are, what are some uh, famous sites in Cape Town? Uh, so the penguins, as they mentioned, the penguins, I love the penguins in Cape Town. Um, often when I have friends from Canada, that's their favorite. The penguins, you always, <laughs> one usually associates uh, penguins in the snow or in cold weather, but we have, I think they're called the jackass penguins on the beach, in Boulder's Beach. And they're really lovely. You go to this, this beach with, little beach with the sea with boulders and all these uh, penguins. They're little, like little gentlemen. They're really, I love those penguins. Um, and Batata, what is your favorite site here? If you, if you have a friend from- My favorite other... place, my favorite place where I always happy when I go to Cape Point. I love Cape Point. When I'm Cape Point, we're going to see the miracle of God. What is, is, what, is, what is Cape Point? We're going to see. Cape Point is where the two oceans meet, Atlantic and Ocean India. It's, it's where, yeah, where the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean meet. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, will, it's wild. My one daughter lived in New York, and whenever she came for a holiday to South Africa, obviously from this built-up city in New York, you want open wild spaces it's wild and open and it's, it's huge it's beautiful lots of uh, um chimpanzees uh, baboons that come and steal all your food right <laughs> yeah it's true you give them food if you don't want they, they can throw you stone they know those baboons <laughs> there are a lot of them andy oh yeah i see Hello. Yeah. Uh, I, I think there is some connection thing. Yes, I'm saying no about yeah, no is a connection. I know about Cape Town is a lot of place. Like me, example, I'm Uber driver. I'm driving people. There is one land everywhere from Costasia, the place only for wine. 
testing wine. There's some place where in Stellenbosch, the beautiful place in Cape Town, there are also too much testing place, only wine. People like, especially when I'm driving tourists around around the country, around the city. I can start from Sea Point in Cape Town. I go straight in the Out Bay in the harbor place where you're gonna see a lot of funny stuff in the world. You go straight to Cape Point, from Cape Point, you turn around, Constantia, wine testing. That is a place where maybe one day when you come here, you must let me know. You're gonna see. I can be welcome to each and everyone around the world to Cape Town. It's a beautiful city in the world, man. It is, but it's not beautiful because you've never been here. If you've been here, if you don't follow the media. Some media, they are just there to show, to show people the bad areas. They don't talk about good places. That is the only problem about media we said earlier. Some media is the people who make people in fear. Maybe the business they are into, but sometimes they make people in fear. They always talk bad about the place. Some people they can say, example, like in Africa, people are going to say Africa is bad, is bad. If it's bad, why you always come and do some business here? You can tell you the place is bad because you've never been there or you don't want you to come here to see yourself. But I, I driving as a guy is from United States. It was the first time last year to came in South Africa, in Africa. When you reach to airport in Cape Town International, he told me, man, is this Africa or is this Europe? He said, man, this is Africa. <clears throat> he just said Cape Town. This is Africa. I said, man, when we see the TV, we see in township like Africa is dirty, whatever. I said, no, that is the media. They'll never show you the good place. They're going to show you all the bad side of people. And everywhere, what I believe, everywhere there is location, there is township. Everywhere there is township. My mother, United States, I do with family. Some are in the township. It depends on the different of township. Now, sometimes I can tell even the media also to be not let people to be in fear. Uh, Someone wants to come to visit in sorry, Africa. Sorry, uh, 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 can I ask, uh, because... Uh, I know what is a township, but I think uh, other people don't. I mean, those who are watching us. Could you explain what is a township? What is this concept? Town township is a rural area, like uh, where... It's like a, township is a rural area. The small town of people, not everyone who live in suburb, in town. But there is a place they call it township where most of... You're going to find people, most of us black people who we live there. It's like a rural area somewhere. Like I can say the place is popular, Kailicha, like Soweto, that is a popular township. It's a, like a town, a small town of majority of people that live there is only black. Mm -hmm. That's the township we are, are calling. Are they dangerous? Where are you going to see? Dangerous, of course, some of places are, are dangerous and some are not dangerous. And it depends how you take care of yourself. Everywhere is dangerous, man. No matter you're in town, you're in suburb, you are where it's dangerous if you walk at night. <clears throat> when you start walking at night, it's dangerous everywhere around the world. Now, but when you know the time from work, you go home, it will never be dangerous. All you will have found those guys who are always drinking and smoking their stuff, they don't want to see you talking to the cell phone. I'm sure your cell phone is gone. <laughs> that is what makes dangerous. Yes, it's true. Batasha, whereabouts were you born? Actually, I'm originally from Congo. Oh, really? DRC. Yes, I'm from Congo and DRC. I was born there. I came here in 2002 when I arrived here. So you've been here for quite a long time. I've been, I've been here for quite a long time. I've been everywhere in South Africa. I can say I was working in mine in Mpumalanga. Ah. I've been different places really, but I, when I arrived here, I used to stay in Mossel Bay. Mossel Bay next to George. Yes, I've been to Mossel Bay. Yes, I've been there. I grew up there actually for those all years. I've been there in Mossel Bay. What is Mossel right. Bay? They've, I just they've, moved they've, in. Haven't they? What What is it? What is the place? Mossel Bay is an area. Mossel Bay is just like an area, like the you can say Stellenbosch example. It's just like an area, Mosul Bay. Of, of a city. It's other city, of, the small of, city of, Cape of, Town. of Western Cape. 
Uh-huh. Of yeah, I can say Cape Town is the main one, but in the Western Cape, the small town. Mm-hmm. So Cape Town has uh, several uh, locations, and every has uh, each of them has a name, and then there are townships around. Yes. Yes, of course, yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Okay, and I just want to explain to the listeners. So DRC is Democratic Republic of Congo because there are uh, two Congos. There is Congo Brazzaville, which is the neighbor of the DRC. So uh, yes, Batato is from from DRC. I'm from DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. There is a baby in your flat who is crying. There's a baby is crying next door there. Sorry? Yeah, there's a baby is crying next door there. Mm. I, I thought I had hallucinations, but uh, now I'm happy that uh, I didn't <laughs> have hallucinations. That was really a baby. Uh, there is a question a for, for, for Caroline. Uh, Caroline, did you take part in film industry? What are your favorite films? Oh my goodness, Andy, that's very difficult. My favorite films. Um, I didn't take part in the film industry. It was my, it was, was my husband was a cinematographer. Um, um, so it was, he, he was in the film industry. I just went because he got offered this good job. Um, my favorite films are such a huge question. Um, I'll just have to think. I've got quite a lot of favorite films. How oh, should I say Dr. Shivago? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I did enjoy that, but I had to say that. Um, I'm just, I saw one good one last night, actually. I know you don't watch a lot of films. You don't. I don't, but I know, I, I I know what, what, what Vadim does watch a lot of films. Hello? Yes. Yes, I watch. Uh huh. So Vadim is a, uh, he, he watches a lot of films, but I, I, I still don't. Oh, it's a bit, uh, but Dean, can you tell me your favorite? It's a very difficult question. That um, I'm just thinking. Last night I watched a very good film. It was um, with Helen Mirren. In. It was about. Um, it was called The Gold Lady. I'm just thinking of the closest one. And it, it was about um, what's his name, Klimt. You know that Klimt did that beautiful painting of the Gold Lady. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I don't. Do you know Klimt, I, I don't, I, that I, I artist. Don't this movie, actually. Uh, 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 you've seen it and I just thought last night I thought it was really good I, I've seen the, the, this beautiful painting you know Klimt's paintings with all the gold um, but I, I saw it in New York in um, the Neuer Museum but I didn't know the history so seeing this film last night told me this painting had traveled from Austria it was it was like um, it was like what's that um, it was to Austria like um, what is that the painting in, in the Louvre Leonardo da Vinci's painting, you know. Oh, Jaconda. Uh, no, or uh, <laughs> Mona Lisa or Jaconda, that's the name. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. No, no, I'm thinking of the Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. They said this gold lady was to Austria that um, the Mona Lisa was to Paris. And this, uh, it was such a lovely story that they managed, this lawyer with nothing um, got this, this painting who was stolen from um, this woman. Uh, they got it back to um, where she was living in New York, to New York. So I saw the history of a painting I'd seen and loved, which I didn't know the history. So that was great. And uh, you've seen um, the film too? No, no, unfortunately not. But actually, uh, I, I watched uh, a lot of movies uh, recently because we are in the leash. Yes, but, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's very hard for me uh, to mention uh, the, the, the best one uh, maybe I can recommend you to watch if you, you if you didn't uh, the uh, movie tomorrow. Uh, oh, I would very, love you to recommend. Uh, actually, it's uh, about um, it's a story about um, how to say it. Um, you know, it's about Beatles in a way, uh, but um, the world the is Beatles. out. Uh, the music group, uh, the music band. Um, yes, yes, I know them, the Beatles. Yes, yes, I'm old. I know the Beatles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're my era. Right. But, uh, yeah. The main character, uh, a musician, uh, and uh, he uh, appeared in the world where Beatles ha- uh, have never been at all. And only one and oh. uh, a few people uh, remember uh, about uh, their existence and about their songs. 
and uh, he started to to sing it and pretend that it's uh, his uh, own songs and uh, he uh, became very famous and it was very funny and uh, i would love to see that movie what's it called what is the title tomorrow in, in i it's think called... it's about uh, the uh, oh sorry sorry uh, <laughs> i confused with uh, the um, is the names tomorrow yesterday yesterday it's about the song yeah. yes that song yesterday yesterday yeah, yeah. i just uh, i'm just thinking about my tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great yesterday, yeah, yesterday. We, we know the song oh, oh i've definitely watched that i actually have heard about that 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 movie yeah. i'll see if i can yeah. get hold of it uh, uh yes i uh i got i got know about it um several months ago and uh, just recently I uh, decided to watch it and uh, didn't regret. It's, it's worth to, to, to watch, definitely. Oh, thank you for that. I have heard about it actually, uh, but I, I, it seems like a good one to watch while we're in quarantine. I like watching films in quarantine. Uh, what, do, uh, what kind of source do you use when you watch uh, movies? I mean, uh, Netflix or some subscriptions? Well, uh, well, um, we do, uh, my daughter, she's, we, actually I've got both my daughters with me in this quarantine, which is their grown up daughters, so it's quite unusual, but her, she was working in um, the bush, one of my daughters, you know, the bush uh, for a, uh, a wildlife organization, she ran a photographic printing um, thing, anyway, it closed down, so she's come here, so we're all together, so she had a Netflix, um, <coughs> We did, we did Netflix because she had a, one of those things. A, what are they called? Uh, yeah, she's, got, she's got Netflix for one month, so we've been watching Netflix. Mm. But also, she, uh, well, you can, I don't know whether I should admit to this, but I mean, there are, you can download these movies. Uh, whether I should say this or not, I don't know. In Russia, can you can. <laughs> you know, I don't know who's watching this. Is it very bad to do we, that? We have no intellectual property in this country yet, so feel free to say this. Well, I mean, that th this will be published, but I mean, this is not going to be a serious thing. And anyway, uh, in Russia, nobody will ev even understand the stream because we don't speak English here. So uh, I just wanted to say uh, there is a comment, uh, um, Caroline, to you. Uh, da Vinci had a birthday yesterday on April 15, so she'll watch the film, the film, uh, or he will watch the oh. film. Uh, so thanks for sharing the idea. I'm so happy, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. As it's yeah. your birthday, I hope you really do. Okay. No, it's uh, Da Vinci's birthday, not not her, not 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 the person's birthday, but Da Vinci's birthday was yesterday. Oh, all right. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for me, okay, uh, okay. For me, for me, it's actually a program to find um, a very good website. Uh, where you can watch uh, HD films uh, online uh, with uh, the function to uh, with the function of turning on or off the subtitles because uh, some moments, especially in American films, uh, I cannot understand uh, yes. due to the accent. Uh, that's why I need some subtitles. But the last time, so it was Saturday, uh, I tried to find uh, the film called 27 Weddings. And it was really, really hard. One resource was just downloading very, very, very slowly. Uh, I find another, I, I found another one, but it was just with subtitles. I couldn't turn them off. I was like, no, I want, I want to advance my English. I want to read it. I want to understand this American accent perfectly. So that's why uh, I wanted to watch this film without any subtitles. Oh, right. Okay. Mm. I saw one with subtitles last night. Uh, okay. Goodbye to everyone. You're, you're leaving. Okay. Good, bye, goodbye, Questa. Well, I, I guess <laughs> that, that was fast. <laughs> uh, sorry for interruption, Caroline. So, um, no, you were saying? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, just no, just a quick one. Then, then I watch. I started watching with. Uh, it's the kite, the kite runner. Um, it, it it was a good book. I haven't read the book yet. The kite runner, uh, that had subtitles <coughs> last night. It looked it looked very good, but I haven't watched it. 
looks like my next film. The kite. Have you heard of the Kite Runner? No, I haven't. It, it was a very good book. It takes place in the Middle East. I'll tell you next time when I've seen the film. I haven't read the book either. Apparently, it's a very good book. Okay. Uh, what about Batato? Batato. I need to ask a question. What? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I, I need to ask a question. Yeah. Maybe someone will explain to me because I hear a lot of news about, about a lot of rumors. Everyone is talking about this. What this five G, which is coming? What is all about? If one of you hear about it, come again. About what? The five G, five G. Five G. Connection. Five G. Connection type. Connection type. Uh, in Britain, yes. in Britain, they're burning towers of 5G because they believe 5G spreads the virus, which is total nonsense. But uh, this is just a stronger connection. If I, if you're talking about the internet, I've heard this. Goodness, is this not? Is this a conspiracy theory or what? <laughs> <laughs> I really do. That's why I want Andy to explain to me if you hear about it. That 5G, 5G, everyone. Some they are scared about it. Some they say that 5G is killing people <laughs> and the scan of this world. I really don't know what is going on. If it kills people only by its speed, <laughs> nothing at all. This is, uh, well, I have uh, my router, my internet router, uh, router has a 5G option. So, and I'm still alive. So pr probably... Uh, <laughs> That's, uh... But I think it's a different, you know, it's a Wi-Fi connection, but not. Uh... Okay. Yeah, because that is a rumor for Africa. Most of us are scared here. They said this 5G, <laughs> they bring it here. It's about killing people here. Now, is this kind of news they bring about vaccine? They want vaccine people. Now, most of them, they don't want, they say they want to... Eh? Vaccine uh, called 4G, 3G. Yeah. They... Yeah, now they say this vaccine for 5G, they want to come and kill people here. Now there's a lot of rumor which is going around people's mind. Uh, what do you think? What I think right now, oh, I don't know really. For now, we're going to just expect what is going to come next, man. I don't know yet for now. Well, come on, you're using your phone to talk to me and you're alive. And it's what, 4G? This one I'm using is 4G, okay. not 5G. <laughs> are, are, you, are you feeling okay? <laughs> the... I'm sleeping okay, but for me, I'm, I'm, here for me. I'm not afraid of death, man. For me, I'm not afraid of anything. What is coming in my mind, I'm not, I didn't bring myself in this world. Okay. I believe there's someone who created us. And when someone gone, it's his wish for us to leave the world. Mm. Now, there's no security of this world. Anyone is going to go. So you shouldn't be stressed now, about 5G then. Uh, there is an answer about... Uh, can, uh, mm -hmm. the, no, you can say yeah, okay, th th There is an answer about uh, 5G question on the chat. Um, so the person says, my husband is an engineer. He says 5G isn't to blame for anything. So this is a professional answer from a specialist. I think you can now uh, feel confident to say that 5G is okay. Oh, it's fine then. I didn't know about it because there are too much room. I mean, you can hear a lot of anyone can explain his own way. What about so we can all we can go and get we can swap our four Gs for five Gs, Batata. Yeah, <laughs> maybe that would be cool. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> next year. Yeah, me too. Batata, what is your favorite film? My favorite film is Black Diamond. I haven't heard of that. Has anyone? I think I have. No. Who was the actor? It was the, it was um, an American actor. Yes, the one who played in Sierra Leone for those small boys who are busy digging the diamonds. Yes, it was a very good. Um, it was very good. It was true, based on fact, wasn't it? Actually, according to me, it's true. It's happening because I come from Congo in DRC. Where I come from, I come from east of Congo, in the place called Uvira, in Bukavu, that side. You can understand, a lot of kids, they leave school, they go to the mine to make a living. Now, most of them, they, they, to they go to underground to look for this cobalt, culture, whatever. They're selling for them maybe $10, $50, 
for them to get salary of the school or to feed their family. Depend on which kind of family you are, because people are suffering here. Now, some people, they leave the school, they're running that side. That movie, that's what I love, that movie is true life. Maybe some people are saying it's acting, but when you come to DRC story, in east of DRC, if the oil never finishes because of that diamond mineral, and that's why that movie is my favorite one. When I see that movie, I remember where I come from. The same story. So what is the story of the film? What was happening? What is the plot? The story, the story about the film, it was for people who using people, take other people for advantage. To take a lot of people to go and work for you without pay. Give them guns and go doing violence around the small areas. And some people, they go, they come to pick the small kids in town to go and work for them in mine. When they get those diamonds, and then they take for themselves, they go to take those diamonds to American state or Korea to go to sell for their big bucks. And those boys who are digging, they'll never get anything. No money they are getting. They're just working for the food. That was a story for that movie. And it's quite, when you see in Congo, where I come from, DRC, Believe me, it's happening until now. It's a place you can go. You're going to see, when you reach there, you're going to cry. To see how people are living while there's a lot of minerals in their ground. You can cry, Mr. Andy, when you are coming to Congo, like in the east of Congo. The people out there are suffering, and while they got everything in their ground. They are coming, take the mineral straight to Goma. The place they call in Goma is other province, north of Congo. From there, there's a plane which is going straight to overseas. All this phone we are using, this 5G, I don't know, this plasma HD we are coming, is a mineral of Congo. That is coming from Congo, it's cobalt. And that we believe cobalt is in all in Congo and DRC, where you find those kind of minerals. But when you go to Congo, 5, five kg of cobalt, you can buy maybe, they bought for $50. Now when you go to $50 to the authorities, those army, then they go to sell for 1.5 thousand US dollar. From that side, when you go to overseas, they sell the same one they buy $50, they go to sell it for 15,000 US dollar. That's the business, and that's why the war will never finish in Congo. It's not easy for that war to end. It's all about money. That is only when I see that movie, I come to look the the story of Congo the same. 1996, it used to be the same when they are busy picking us small boys to go and fight war. They want to take us to the ground, but some of us run, some of them we get killed. Now the same story, we are small, we are still small boys, 15, 16. They give you AK-47. What are you going to do with small boys with big guns? Obviously, they want to use you. If you know what, choice is yours. You die. Now, when I see that movie, it's true. What is happening? And that's why I love that movie, man. It's a sad story for each and everyone who's been in the east of Congo. Congo is big, but if someone who comes to the border of Rwanda, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, all this side of east, they're going to know the story. There is some gorilla in Congo, but people, they wave to go to Rwanda to go to see gorilla in Virunga Park. Now, all those stuff, what? It's a politician, man. I believe, I believe one day is one day we don't know which government will come and save that country, but it's not easy for the world to finish. That so, side, I've been there, I grew up. So you are saying that yes, Andy. Uh, in Congo there is exploitation of uh, young people who work for almost zero money, and then when this mineral is extracted, they give little, little money to people who work and then they sell this mineral for much, much higher money overseas. And so this is it's corruption. True, yes. Mm -hmm. That is corru exactly corruption. I'm not afraid of saying it because it's painful. It's where I come from. It's where I born. I know. I know how people are suffering there. When you can go, you pass in the street, you're going to see this person. They can come. There is some area. They can move all of you. They come. They make war in that your area. They know that there is, my, there is some minerals. 
in that area. Now he's going to be fighting, fighting, fighting. After that, when people are moving, they become refugees maybe to other country. They go to dig there. They get what they want. Now Congo is a blessing country. But they bring war. We fight each other. We run. We leave the place. The place become, like example, Cape Town become empty. People coming and dig the place. And to take what they want. That is what is happening in Congo, man. It's not all Congo there is war. There's a place in Congo that will never hear a bullet. It's all in the east of Congo where there is war. Can you believe in Congo there's no electricity? And while we got a barrage Inga, which can produce electricity in all over, everywhere around the world, but we in Congolese, we don't have electricity. That is a sad story when I hear about it. And it's not about here. I know about I grew up there, we don't have electricity. The place like in Congo, they cannot make it, you don't have a road. Just a road for the car to pass is difficult. That's the shame, the shame for ourselves. I don't know what I can say. Because it's really painful when I see those kind of stuff. There's no road in Congo, man. Are you planning to because come back? Because they cannot make a road. Huh? Are you planning to come back or are you going to stay in Cape Town? Actually, my plan, we never know. I believe where you are, that is your home. I can go home, maybe I go home maybe to for visit, I come back. But how are you gonna go home, man, for this kind of situation? Life is different. Where you are, if you are happy about it, stay the place. That is your home. Mm-hmm. That's what my father used to tell me. I think I think Batato, we should have uh, a special conversation maybe next week about uh difficulties that Congo has and uh, South Africa has and maybe we can invite people who are specifically interested in this kind of um, problems that uh, and and we could we could have a, mo- a deeper conversation what do you think do you think you'll have time next time to to uh, next week to to and talk they, about I can I have I do have time but about deep it's not about only South Africa or about uh, Congo I can say maybe about Everywhere, what is happening in the world? We all know what is happening, but people just scared about talking about it. We all know what is going on, but they say the poor are gonna remain poor, the rich are gonna get richer. Hmm. That is what is happening in the world, man. And it's true. We are inside the house. Example, right now, I'm Uber driver. Example, I'm not working. This is when coronavirus start. Maybe I was saving my ten thousand rand. Maybe it's finished. I have to pay rent. What about the patient that doesn't pay rent? What about who, me, I'm paying rent? How much I'm going to save to feed my family too? Now, this is not kind of the stuff. This is the stuff that's happening for real. And someone who's getting 100000 per month, he don't care about it because he got enough already, he doesn't pay rent. Now, all this kind of stuff is something which is happening man, in the world. It's not only in South Africa. It's not only where. It's every, even in Russia, it's the same story. It's not any Russia who is perfect. No, some Russia, they are also, their life is down. The authorities, they know their story. This is the kind of stuff people want to, to remain the same level every day. We are getting, some, like, men, I, like now, I have no job. I'm only Uber driver. Now, who going to work? You know, tell you are, here you are now only to driving from 6 a.m. to 4, to 10 a.m. And then, you go home from 4 p.m. to 8, 8 p.m. You finish. Now there's no customer who's gonna go outside the while this is coronavirus. You cannot just take a risk of your own life and to put other people in danger. You never know. Better stay at home. Now that's why you can see a lot of looting in township about those bottle store, whatever. And I'm sure if you continue, there'll be more because people don't have a job. Some people are general workers. Some people, they are housekeeping or working. Right now, they are at home. They don't have money to feed their children. What do you expect to the people? They're going to rob or stealing, breaking shops. That's what is happening. And I'm sure I pray to God this stuff must finish. If you're not going to finish, it's going to be more worse. Because people, they are crying. They have no job. There are people, they have to sell some stuff in the street to buy food. Now no one is allowed to be in the street. Now all those kind of stuff, I pray for the government to look on it. You cannot feed all the country. No one can feed all the country, man. 
you can feed few. What about few other areas? All those kind of stuff, man. It's tough story in Africa, and I'm so my mama's here, Caroline, knows about it a little, but he knows oh, the story of Africa. I, we, we're not, and we don't have the resources that some countries have, from what I can gather. It's, you know, it's really yeah. hand to, there's a lot of hand to mouth feeding, and what do you do? Right, uh, uh, Batata? You, you know, example, uh, what are you saying, Mama? I'm just saying, I don't, I, from what I see, um, South Africa, we might be more resourceful than a lot of other African countries, but from like countries in the world, we don't really have the resources to help everybody. That is true. And the example I can take, I used to work in mine. I used to work in mine in Mpumalanga. That is a other province, Andy. The, it's a province called Mpumalanga. Yeah. I used to work in Wheatland. I've been to Mp Mpumalanga. Very um, lush soil, red soil. Yes, in, in Wheatbank. I used to work there in Wheatbank. Yes. Now, you are getting salary of 5,000. I'm I was operating the machine. Now, 5,000. What are you going to do? 5,000. Oh, uh, a question, a question. So, 5,000 five, five rents, right? A month. Yes, 5,000. Uh -huh. So could you tell a us uh, how much money do you need to live in Cape Town a uh, normal life? So how much, how many thousands of rents do you need? So what is it? 5,000 is a lot or not a lot? To me, well, not actually, a lot. Actually, 5,000 is, is not a lot. Because where I'm renting, example, a room, I'm paying 4,000 rand. 4.5, 4,500 rand. That is where I'm renting a room. Now, what if I get salary of 5,000? Not at my grocery, not at my transport. What about my kids' school fees? It's not a lot. It's small money. You have to hustle harder to survive. Now, when I used to work in mine, I ran in mine, I go back to my, my old cutting hair. It was better to cut hair more than to be in mine. I wake up 4, 4 a.m. to go to work, and you come back 8 p.m. You finish. You're sleeping all for four hours. Not that you're still going to cook. Now, it's not easy, man. It's tough life, but this is an Africa story. That's why I like to want to say maybe we can go deeper by next time when we all got time. But when you hear this kind of story, you know me. A lot of story, man. Now... When we hear about this kind of story, it's true. That's why sometimes I blame media. They are busy every day talk bad or good stuff about places. But you don't go deeper with people who are suffering every day. There are thousands of people who suffer right now. I, I know that like um, countries invest uh, in Africa, but uh, the thing is that um, uh, it's our one of our professors' viewpoint uh, that uh, it's better to um, to uh, teach Africans to uh, be uh, to work like to build something and to work there like factories, for example. But um, from the other hand, Africa is rich uh, um, in a view in a point of view of like resources. Uh, Africa, Africa is a rich country of resources, and um, this is why uh, others uh, do not want to develop it, to develop uh, Af Africa in this direct direction. It's true, Alicia, because I believe Africa is the best continent in the world. Now, believe me, I'm from Congo. I've been here for 18 years. I don't have even a paper. I'm still a refugee. For 18 years in the country, I'm still a mm. refugee. That is Africa. 18 years, I'm still using a salam seeker. In other country, in 18 years, you already become citizen. But, but I'm still a refugee. So, uh, now, what are the most payment? Uh, what are the most paid jobs in Africa? In okay, in um, uh, in Cape Town. Example, like in Cape Town, like South Africa, the most paid job is only when we work in government, man. If we mm -hmm. work in government, that is a more paid job. Or if you got a permanent job, not a contract. If you have a permanent job, it's better you know how you can have balance. But if you got a contract job, you have no guarantee. You can work for every three months. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think at a, time, at a time like this now, I think the people who, for instance, the people who work, who work for City of Cape Town, I think have been protected, even if they're at home, they get paid a salary. I think I'm right in saying that. Yeah, you are right, yes, sir. You are right, ma'am. Uh, there is a... Patasha, can I just ask you, Patasha, one question? I just see your names. How do you say your, your name? My name is Batatu. Uh, and, and over here it's spelled B-I-K-A-Y. Batatu. I think, okay, it, I think, I think it is B- sur- it's surname, I think. Bikai is oh. your surname, right? Batatu. That one, oh, that okay. one is my third name. That one they say is B-K. Okay, thank you. Batatu is your that... name. Yeah, Batatu is my name. Batatu is the meaning of Batatu is a Swahili name. I speak Swahili. Oh, beautiful Batatu, language. Batatu is three. Okay. I'm a triplex. We oh, born okay. three, same time. Oh, yeah, I'm a triplex. triplex. And we say Bukuru. Yes, we say Bukuru, Butoi, Batatu. I was a third one, but two, two passed away. I'm the only one who survived. Oh, goodness. Gosh. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. That is Batatu. It's a Swahili. Yes, it's a beautiful language. Swahili. I yeah, don't speak it, you. I just have heard it. You can speak, you can say Abari. <laughs> what? Say that? Are you giving me a Swahili? Abari. Abari. Yeah, Abari. Yeah. Abari. Is he, how are you? Oh, Abari. Mm. Thank you, Patricia. Yeah. So English okay. club turns into learning other languages club. Yes, yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah. make a Swahili, a Swahili uh, it, platform. It's, it's good. It, it's uh, quite okay because like, through language you learn culture and through culture you learn language. So. Yes, that's right. That, that is the biggest African language right now, Swahili. In Africa, yes, that is where I found a lot of places where they speak a lot of countries. They speak Swahili. And they become popular right now in Africa. There is a question from the chat, uh, Batato, to you. What is what do you like most about Africa? What I like most about Africa, man, they say sweet, sweet home everywhere. Home is home. Africa, I like about Africa is about everything. About food. About the weather, we got a good weather here. That's what I like about Af- Africa. Mm-hmm. And uh, got a good weather, good resourcing, everything, only bad management. <laughs> management is the answer to many questions. Yes. And uh, Caroline, what about uh, your favorite thing about Africa? Yeah, and, and I don't forget. I suppose Africa for me is really. I love uh, the idea of, of going to the wild, the wild, the wide open spaces of Kenya, for instance. And I've been to. I haven't been to Kenya, but I've been to Zimbabwe, and it's. Uh, so, what is my favorite thing? Um, well, when I was in Canada, I missed. I can think. I missed um, the felt. The felt is yellow grass. It's so strange that that's what you miss. Wide open skies of the Karoo. Hmm. You know, we've got many different landscapes, as Batata knows, but I, I miss the open space. You know, Canada is very beautiful. It has a lot of forests, but I, I miss the wide, big blue skies and, and, and yellow grass felt. Interesting thing to miss, really. It is. Andy? Uh, Andy? Oh? Yes, you've been, in, you've been in South Africa, you've been in Africa. What do you love most when you was here? <laughs> I would say maybe, well, now I start, I think, understanding uh, what I'm missing about Africa. I'm missing the vibrance, the vitality of the place. I mean that it's really a life. It's a question of life. It's a question of survival. And it's uh, this uh, spirit. Uh, and uh, the multitude, I mean, the diversity of everything there, the amount of different people, I quite miss this in Russia. The plenty of opinions, the plenty of uh, looks and views and uh, all possible variations of philosophies, which kind of coincide and cohabit. 
Uh, I miss uh, the air. I miss the sunsets. I lived in this uh, flat of mine, uh, a room that I rented, and my balcony was exactly looking at the lion's head. I took a lot of photos, okay. and the lion's head was always visible, and it was either uh, before the sunset, I mean, the sky, which was orange or purple or blue or gray, and the lion's head was always looming or or actually visible. Uh, and I, I was so fascinated with the view. And uh, this kind of... I mean, you're in your flat, but you hear the street all the time. Somebody's chatting, somebody's crying, somebody's shouting, somebody's laughing or joking or singing or praying. I mean, it's always kind of dynamical. It's so alive, as I said. It's so it's a living organism. And uh, there is no this kind of urban staticness of uh, modern city, which is, for example, I think my city or capital city it's it's a different thing so i start missing that and i i i think i want to come back to such a place i mean not exactly the place of cape town but to this con concept of feeling uh and the ocean of course this uh, emanating power menacing threatening uh gravitating also unknown the air the wind which is just crazy uh, rain tasted differently. Rain had different smell, uh, different taste. I mean, when it was in your mouth, it was softer than rain in Krasnoyarsk in our city. Ooh. Hmm. A lot of things, actually. So, I, I really feel nostalgic. Y yes, Vadim, sorry. I think, uh, I suspect that uh, the water which uh, uh, rain made of doesn't consist uh, ace contains ace we have we our water when we we have rain uh, contains some acid and maybe alkalines i don't know and because of that taste is different possibly i don't know but yeah it was different definitely and vadim what is your favorite thing about russia hmm. ecology issues you know. no well come on i mean not 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 hated but favorite uh do, do you hear me i just yes I, no, I now i can one, now i hear silence yeah so what is your favorite thing about russia not what you hate but what you what you love uh, ecology issues i think you can't love uh, no no actually uh maybe some distraction or maybe I, I don't know I, I i don't hear you completely at all uh, i i i hear only fragments of your speech um very few fragments maybe a technological problem i don't know i, I don't know uh caroline can you hear me i can hear uh, you perfectly alicia can you hear me maybe it's uh, well Vadim, that's oh. probably something on your side well, what about sound now? now? Yeah, uh, but can you hear uh, me now? Better, better, better. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. So the question was about uh, your favorite thing or about Russia, what you love about Russia. Uh, actually, uh, Russia is my motherland and actually it's my background. It's very hard to uh, focus on only one thing. Maybe it's a feeling of, uh, of cold, of, um, I don't know, can we uh, say it's security, but maybe it's not correct, but nevertheless, even if we criticize our state, and, uh, I mean, uh, state of <laughs> affairs, uh, not state of itself, uh, and uh, problems, we have a lot of problems, but at the same time, our Russia is our, our motherland, and uh, we uh, love it, you know, actually, maybe without any uh, specific reason, 
not because of uh, sunsets, sunrises, just because we uh, were born uh, here and uh, it's our place of living. And you know, it's kind of interconnected, our feeling and, and it's not rational, actually. It's maybe it's about um, some limitation because uh, there are a lot of places where I, I have not been yet, and maybe uh, some places uh, better than place where uh, where, uh, where I live now. But uh, you know, actually, I think uh, the uh, love. For motherland, it's not about for uh, we love it not for something we love we love we, uh, we like or love it because we uh, were born there uh, or here and um, you know actually I like uh, if we focus on some details I actually like uh, the nature I like um, I like the I like, uh, it maybe it sounds uh, funny, but I like our city, especially the center of our city. But it's not the case because uh, I have inter inner feeling uh, of uh, connection between, uh, maybe it's, it's uh, connected with uh, our uh, nationality, our language, because uh, we, uh, we learn in English, but uh, at the same time, we uh, think, uh, maybe I think, in uh, Russian uh, way of, uh, of thinking. I don't know. It's not a Russian. It's not a rational. It's a kind of uh, emotional way. And um, I can't uh, mention some specific uh, thing which I uh, love very much. And, uh, and I think it's. It's not the case in this, in this situation, and I, I like to live here. But uh, at the same time, I like to travel and see in other places to compare and make some impression, a uh, new impression, refreshment, and uh, makes me uh, more creative, more happy to compare uh, places to. Uh, see another people, another culture, I mean, richer inside and uh, uh, gives me some positive energy. And uh, I, I like the balance. I like uh, to be home and uh, at the same time to, to have, uh, uh, to, to, to be able to, to travel and uh, connect to another culture. But home is home. That's all. Hmm. Alessa, what about you? Uh, so, like, I just to have a switch. I have only one call for uh, power, <laughs> for energy, and for uh, the air force. So, uh, and uh, I always change it. <laughs> so, uh, Russia is a great country, really, you know, like Lermontov um, wrote in one of his poems. Who is Lermontov? Um, uh, Mikhail Lermontov is our Russian. So, you know Pushkin? Do you know Pushkin? Like international uh, guest? No? Pushkin? Oh, I... Yes, yes, I've heard of him. Pushkin, yes. What... So, yes. just, just a, a bit <laughs> historical, like, the, uh, just a bit history of Russian. So uh, Pushkin is not only a poet, uh, he is uh, uh, also the, like, the inventor, not the inventor of Russian, but he has, uh, so from him, uh, our, the history of our Russian modern language starts. So you may find the information on the internet after our club. So we have uh, Pushkin, he is believed to be the son of our um, poetry. Uh, but we have also Lermontov, who is believed to be the moon of our poetry. Pushkin is really a genius, so you may find uh, information uh, later. And um, so Lermontov uh, wrote uh, this, the following phrase, I love my uh, country, but this love is strange, and I absolutely agree with it. 
because uh, our country is really great. Uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, like Siberia is a great place to um, to uh, to op- to discover. Really, we have a lot of sites and uh, plenty of views. Uh, we have in some like um, fresh air. We have. Uh, mm, like views like in you may see in the US, but we also have uh, such views here. Uh, I don't remember the name of the canyons. We have canyons as well. So, and economy. So, um, it's one thing how government and people think about our country, but the other thing is that we have cheap water, we have cheap gas, we have this uh, all uh, mm, uh, living cost cheap because uh, um, my friend now lives in LA in Los Angeles and she says that she pays only five dollars for her living cost five hundred dollars only for her living cost so one hundred dollar is only for phone one hundred dollar is for water one hundred dollar is for um, electricity and so on and so on um, secondly we uh, have plenty of um, cafes multicultural cafes so you can try any uh, cuisine here we have uh, thirdly we have uh, beauty service great beauty service like in europe in asia you you hardly you will hardly find uh, like nail masters but here like uh, every second person is a nail master a hairdress and so on and so on so uh, russia is really great if to think uh, uh, about it or uh, deeply uh, it was a conclusion that uh, I think I was ca- I has been coming long uh, but really uh, mm, and I do not blame our government of course because uh, it's not very bad if it is, was too bad uh, we could live in, we would live in uh, more awful conditions but still Russia is a great place to visit to know culture um, and um, to try like, <laughs> you know, to to experience um, the real um, life especially you know like in the risk when there is no internet connection at all or, or in uh, some um, how it's called, in some fields to experience winter, a lot of people really want to come to Russia to experience winter, uh, but they come to Moscow and St. Petersburg <laughs> uh, when there is no winter. So I, I, I am positive about Russia. I'm kind of wanting to be Russia. So from one hand to about rights, um, a little notice. Uh, from one hand, we are into the frames because we don't have a lot of freedom of word freedom of speech, presentation, but uh, we still uh, we can uh, leave our children at fl- alone at, at a flat because, for example, in the U.S. you cannot, um, otherwise um, uh, you will be not a parent anymore. Uh, you will not have the rights to be a parent. Hmm. Could I just uh, say hello to Eugene? Uh, Eugene. Yeah, but... Uh, hello, everyone. You- I'm uh, deeply sorry I'm late again. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> it's it's okay. Yeah, I had I had a problem with my connection and finally I I borrowed the phone. Yeah, finally. Well it yeah. w- it works perfectly uh, well. Yeah, yeah, finally. I Tatiana did. is Yujin. Yujin yeah, is yeah. Tatiana. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, first of all, I suppose we need your help to discover Siberia. Yeah, we discussed this problem with Andy. Um several weeks ago, uh, I suppose. So when I was in Izmit, a small city in Turkey, I have discovered everything. I have been in every every freaking cafe. Sorry, sorry, uh, I j- j- been... just I want to again repeat. So Eugen was in Turkey just uh, how long ago? T- three months ago? And he uh, was in Izmir, right? Izmit. Oh. Izmit, yeah. I, I have, yeah, I have been in Izmit, Istanbul, and Izmit. Izmit was my, uh, uh, mostly I was in Izmit. So uh, I have been uh, in almost uh, any it, 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 a bit uh, remarkable place, but I haven't been in Siberia at all. But I have been living here for uh, it's six years. Uh, 
It's uh, because like, um, so in comparison to Australian people, like we are in, we are in Russia. So for us, it's traveling uh, to be in Moscow. It's, it's really traveling to visit Moscow, to visit St. Petersburg, because for our, is this, at least uh, um, it um, costs um, such sum of money, at least. So not just one thousand dollar, one thousand rubles. Like in Europe, for example, you may travel uh, for five thousand rubles from uh, Berlin <laughs> to Paris and from Paris to Berlin. But uh, in Australia, people live like this as well. And um, I think that um, Siberia is not discovered. Like if I uh, would work, if I worked uh, in, to uh, if I had worked in tourism. Uh, I would uh, have uh, um, I would have discovered Siberia. I would like to work in this uh, sphere more because I, I don't know. I, I think I'm keen on developing regions because I, I feel some um, some like uh, some I, I'm furious with. So why only like your uh, Moscow and Cyprus work are uh, being developed? Why not, uh, for example, even Krasnersk or Novosibirsk? So Petersburg is awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is awful to I leave. Was so uh, frightened. In, <laughs> because uh, of the climate, I was uh, in some in St. Petersburg and years, uh, but it's it's developed. Still, it's developed. Uh, there are very good universities there. Uh, they have a lot of uh, international connections. Mm. And hey, it's it's a, quite hard. Yeah. Yeah, we are, think of uh, ballet. It's a, when somebody says St. Petersburg, I would think that I would go to ballet. Is that right? Mariinsky ballet, yeah. Like in <laughs> Russia, we have uh, our school of ballet is the best uh, in the world. It's believed yes. to be so. I don't know how the uh, for the situation now, but before, yes. And it is because of Mariinsky theatre. And I know that a lot of our uh, clubs like dancing clubs travel around the world. For example, Gadenka and uh, Mariinsky Berry. So they travel around the world and show their performances. Right. Thank you. Uh, Eugene, could you tell us one thing that you love about Russia, one thing about Turkey, and one thing about China? Because you've been to uh, China and Turkey yeah. recently. So could you just briefly uh, outline okay. this? Okay. So first of all, I can say uh, plenty of things about Russia. Of course, everything is familiar to me, and I feel comfortable living here. Uh, uh, just I know how it works. <laughs> that's why it's not complicated. Uh, if we're talking about uh, China, China is like a Swiss uh, watch. Uh, everything is working really well, and I was very impressed by a city. Uh, its name, oh, it's near Guangzhou. Uh, Shenzhen. Yeah, this this city was built uh, 35 years ago, but now it has uh, th uh, 15 million population, and it's. I haven't been in New York, but uh, uh, I have seen all the pictures, and it, it it was looking like this. Yeah, and if we're talking about Turkey, people are very friendly, uh, illegally friendly, I would say. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> see me every time I. Um, I have changed a lot of uh, Turkish host families, yeah. And every time when I ask for help, uh, I uh, no nobody refu uh, refused refused it. And uh, I I can say more. They tried the the best. And once I asked one guy to show me the direction uh, to the main street there, and he spent three hours just to show me this. Yeah, yeah. But if we are uh, talking about Russia. I, I can I can uh, highlight something, uh, maybe. Oh no, I can. You know, uh, when you change city, when you are moving in between two cities, you can see uh, you can see forest. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't seen it in Turkey or in China. Uh, it was um, it was settled. Is it correct, Andy? Uh, every everywhere you, you you can see just uh, pure forest. If we, you are moving in between two cities, there are a lot of uh, houses. Mm. You are moving uh, among a lot of houses. Oh, you mean all the areas are inhabited? Yeah. 
Sorry. And our problem, uh, I didn't finish my previous thought. We don't appreciate, uh, I don't appreciate Siberia. I, uh, I'm talking that I, uh, I have been only in Stalby and the main museum here. Uh, but uh, I, I have been living here for six years and that's not so good, I suppose. So that's a good point about appreciation that uh, we had a conversation with Eugene about <coughs> it. That, uh, like we, when, when, when we travel, we really like take time traveling while, while we are at home, we don't usually experience what's happening around. At least, uh, well, we shouldn't say we maybe like Eugene did. So, I mean, he said I, uh, not we, because it's not correct to project everything you do or don't do on yeah. other people. So I don't yeah. travel around uh and uh well eugene had the same observation so maybe we have to appreciate really what actually our country our city has for us uh there was another question on the chat which i don't want to neglect so it's about favorite food and batato your name again was mentioned so what is what is your favorite food man, <laughs> man my favorite food is, is papa man what is pop pop is in milli milli maize, ne? You see maize. We boil water. We put the maize inside. Then we turn it around and like a porridge, and they become strong. That is pap. We eat with meat, with with spinach, cabbage, anything. That is pap. Mm -hmm. So in Swahili we call it ugali. Ugali. Yeah. You know, being in quarantine, I'm interested in new recipe. Maybe you could send us. Yeah. Uh, could you spe spell the name, please? I, I will write down this. Yeah. What's name? Uh, What's name? How do you spell pop? Yep. Pop. Is P yeah, P A P P A P. Oh, it's, it's, it's simple. Yeah, thank you very much. Hmm. I I can give you a recipe. It's a very simple one. Like uh, you buy chicken, then you uh, buy uh funchosa. I don't know how it will. Uh, ah, it's rice noodle, and just uh -huh. rice noodle. So uh, you can cook it just in fifteen minutes. And uh, so my mama liked it a lot. So I uh, nobody wasn't poisoned. So I uh, uh, recommend you just uh, chicken, uh, rice noodles, soy sauce, uh, garlic, and everything is ready. That sounds very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Is. yeah. Just uh, I'm not able to cook something. Good, really. Uh, all my experiments. Uh, Wait, Ch Chibupili, that was what you said last Ch Yeah, Chibupili, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you, may, uh, deli you may order delivery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's really, uh, it was survival for me when uh, I lived in Rome. Yeah. <laughs> so, so support a little business, support business. Oh, now, yeah, especially. I yes. and, you know what, uh, my friend, uh, he has a local business, kind of uh, small small cafe, and everything mm -hmm. is is going okay actually. Just uh, no problem at all. And he said to me that his business uh, is increasing now, and that's really good, really good one. Yeah, and it, that's not logical. Because of delivery, probably. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, but you, you know what? Uh, uh, today, uh, do you know Alf Bank? Yeah, they, yes. they, they, they want to kill me. They want to kill me. They just blocked my card, blocked my card, and then the message uh, when I wrote that. Uh, so they offer me, they offer me to visit the office to get a new card. So they made decision to block my card without any reason. <laughs> but uh, it's current in season now, and I have no idea how to do it. This. <laughs> but it and no be delivery. Done online. I think I, it should be done online. Yeah, but uh, no delivery there. So yeah, that's why uh, uh, food company are much better than banks. <laughs> In Krasnoyarsk, definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Eugene, yeah, uh, and uh, do you have yeah. do you have vibration on your phone? Because if you do, please turn it off. No, it's not. It's not me. Okay, not. somebody had vibration, so please turn it off. Uh, Caroline, yeah. what about what about your cooking uh, and your fa favorite food? Uh, maybe maybe you, you can recommend some recipe. Uh, and what what do what do you love most of all? Oh, I love. Uh, I I eat mostly vegetables. Uh, um, I've got. We eat mostly vegetables in this house. I don't often eat meat. Um, so what do I, I like? I, I love rice, rice with anything. Um, yes, what recipe can I give you? I just have vegetables with rice, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So keeping it simple. Yes. Yes, steamed vegetables with rice. We, we, we eat very simply here. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, so... Oh, so we've re recently we've been making, uh, it's, like this flat bread and all you need is um flour and water and you you roll things into it mm. it's called something i can't remember the name it's a, it's a middle eastern it's an indian thing what are they called you actually my husband makes them you roll uh make flat bread with just plain water and and flour and you roll all sorts of things in it oh it has many names it has a name lavash it roti 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 okay r-o-t-i Otherwise, it can have what name did you call it? Um, well, well, we have well, we have this uh, Armenian Armenian name which is Lavash, and uh, I don't know oh. I don't know how they call it in Armenia actually. And there is this uh, I mean there are other Peter. names, Pita yes Pita, but I don't know if it is Russian or not. It's like kind of an envelope no, envelope yes, which, uh, yes, which, which yes, you put food inside. Food inside. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, some. Oh, so I'll give you a recipe. I've just suddenly thought of something. I felt it suddenly took me. So I do I do roast cauliflower in an oven. You just put little the cauliflower um, florets in an oven, and you can uh, two tins of chickpeas. You roast them, and when you when they're all roasted and brown, you take it out and you put um, a dressing of olive oil with and parsley and mustard, and it's delicious. That sounds very spicy. Yes, and it's taste. It's nice. Okay, I'm feeling hungry now. <laughs> well, so I'm feeling scary. Scary. <laughs> it's spicy. Yeah. Oh, is that scary? Oh, no, it's very easy. Sp very spicy easy. food? No, spicy food <laughs> isn't my option at all. Oh, not not even mustard. But the only spices in that went in there was mustard. Ah, uh, sorry. Mustard. Do you know mustard? Mustard. Yep. Yes. That, so that was the only spice in there was mustard. Mm. But it's 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 pretty it's pretty hot already. I mean, uh... ah, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. okay. All right. Uh, Wadim, what is your cuisine at home? What uh, what do you mainly cook? You know, actually, I uh, prefer simple uh, elements in life. The more simple, uh, the best. And uh, I focused on the curd uh, with berries. Ground cocoa, little sugars, um, some vegetables, of course, uh, salads, uh, white eggs. I you know actually not yolk without yolk. I don't know how to pro to, to spell it in English correctly. Maybe it's uh, correct. Yeah. Say, uh, so uh, eggs, eggs white, not yolk, but only yeah, eggs yeah. white. White. Mm -hmm. And um, and what? Well, I think it's uh, the main uh, part of my cuisine is in the kitchen nowadays. Mm. And, uh, I like it very much <laughs> because, uh, you know, actually I started uh, to uh, reject any uh, products that contains a lot of uh, chemical elements. I mean, uh, a lot of uh, inscription about their contents, a lot of, uh, how to say, uh, chemicals is marked with uh, letter E. Uh, it's uh, repelled me. I think it's not a good uh, option for, for quit. And uh, I prefer to eat natural food. If, if we have, of course. I, I hope we, we do. We have. <laughs> but maybe I'm wrong. I quite miss uh, Cape Tonian milk. Uh, it, w it had very creamy very creamy taste, actually. Uh, kind of uh, ice cream taste, uh, which I don't find it here in Russia. And uh, 
God, I really miss Cape Town now. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, it's quite an, it's quite a funny thing, but I do, I do really miss the supermarket, this uh, pick and pay thing, which I used to go every third day to. Oh, pick and pick and pay. Yeah, okay. yeah, pick yeah, and pay. yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I was shopping there all the time. Yogurt, cheese, uh, eggs, bread. But that had disappeared. Uh, so, and uh, what else? Like, uh, actually, cheese was quite cheap. And yogurt was very cheap, and uh, and and potato, potato, uh, <laughs> fried potato, of course. One kilogram potato, man. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I I need to tell this story. Uh, I think maybe next time I'll I'll tell this story about potato, maybe in a separate video. Actually, uh, it's a pity Batatu left because somebody dropped a recipe, not a recipe, but a Wikipedia entry about uh, this uh, pub or Ugali. So if you need to check it out, you need to go to the chat of this uh, stream uh, and you'll see exactly the link. But it's so it's it's, it's possible to Google it. Uh, so like, mm? and it now has, uh, so this week uh, for two times, I have realized how my, my stream is like South Korea because um uh i was given a template in instagram so choose between these this korean food and i realized oh my god everything i tasted uh there was so tasty everything so uh pies with red beans um chicken or uh, like pork um so what else here yeah, were like everything and chocolate of course and like the country of service the country of food the country of everything like Wow. Of course, there are some disadvantages, but um, it, um, they they most uh, will like touch you when you live there, but not travel. I was remembering my evenings with, with this uh, potato, uh, French fries. Potato. Yeah, with French fries. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they, and I put a lot of salt, a uh, lot of salt, uh, inexcusable so, amount of salt. Just like <laughs> I think, so I put salt before microwave and after microwave, and also when it was half done. I mean, when it was half gone, I also put extra salt. So it was just the, if I can say so, the, the saltiest uh, dish I've ever eaten. But it was <laughs> delicious. Uh, you know, guys, I think we should be kind of going to the end because it's been two hours uh, and uh, I just don't want to exhaust you. Uh, I would like to. <laughs> uh, yeah, you just, I mean, I mean, that's 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 your. Yeah, I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, the, you probably are the most tired person here now because. You... Yeah. <laughs> so, freshman. Yeah, fr freshman. I have a question. Yeah. Just small. Yeah, hey man, everyone please, do they offer a uh, medium or big size plastic bag uh, when you buy something in Africa? Yeah, so if you buy like little portion of potato or french fries, then it is a paper bag. If it is a big size, they use uh, plastic bags for roast chicken. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Why are you asking? Uh, just you know, uh, I, I was uh, I was thinking that it's something our local uh, when uh, the seller offer you a big or medium size. Ah, like you mean the supermarket? So yeah. they they have standard bags, standard blue bags, uh, which are I would say medium size between our small and big bags. Do they insist? Uh, <laughs> if you refuse, uh, they offer. <laughs> Uh, no, they're very polite. Actually, they always say good evening and they say how are you, how was your day, and they say goodbye. So, like every shop assistant in uh, in in pick and pay at least, they are all polite. Uh, actually, Caroline, are shop assistants always uh, that polite with people, or it's just uh, situational? Uh, no, actually, I find no, no, they're not always. They're not always very, not always, but I actually find them very pleasant on the whole. Mm -hmm. I, I find the shop assistants very pleasant on the whole, and you know. If uh, you know, I find I'm just trying to think. You don't often find. I haven't found many rude shop assistants. I'm just trying to think. Not for a long time, anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm, and and plastic bags they're getting um, better in this country because of recycling and plastic. So you can either now buy for more expensive a brown paper bag, which I think you should probably be able to buy a brown paper bag for less. But um, and. 
they, they don't so I take my own bag because of this plastic things mostly, but um, they're becoming more aware of that. And then I have to watch them because I'll be getting a bit neurotic and they're putting things in little plastic bags that you've got no use for, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. too late. They've done it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The same uh, do, do Russia, in the Russia, same. are they aware of plastic or they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you buy butter, a uh, brick of butter or some uh, like household chemicals, they will pack everything separately. And you say, well, no, please stop. I packed it, like I, I, I put it exactly like this. Uh, so I I even like take a tomato for example if I want if I buy one tomato one lemon, I put this uh, barcode on a milk carton for example uh, not to use my tomato lemon for this or not to use a plastic bag but they will try they will try to put it in a plastic bag and I say no stop please it wasn't my idea and sometimes it's 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 too late as you say sometimes it's too late or then you hope that they use it on the next one you said no thank you and it's all been squished up and yeah. <laughs> i don't know anyway but with this virus they can't use an old one so i don't know what they're doing now but anyway yeah well because i mean i was just impressed how polite i mean not just neutral not like uh like uh friendly not just polite but friendly they were massively friendly and very welcoming so that was very nice i mean not that we have rude uh shop assistants here but uh, our kind of uh, the, uh, we, we are, I think, standard. We are standardly polite, while in Cape Town they were more than standard. So oh, that's not. I'm glad you had a good. I'm glad you had a good experience. I'm absolutely, absolutely, yes. Uh, so about, uh, I w I'd like to hear some feedback. Um, so about this uh, video call now. So what uh, what has happened in your opinion, and uh, mm -hmm. can we improve something for the future call, which will be on Saturday? at uh, seven o'clock Krasnyask time, uh, two o'clock uh, Cape Town time. And uh, so I'd like to just know what you feel, think and uh, expect in the future. So this time I think I'll begin with Vadim. Uh, so. Uh, I think it's everything okay. We need to go on. And uh, via internet, I think it's uh, the most uh, problem is uh, connection and uh, some uh, technologies, I mean, microphones, headphones, screens, and so on, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, the format, I think it's the, uh, in general, it's uh, the best thing we, which we have nowadays. And uh, I think we need to keep going. Okay, thank you. We will, we will definitely keep going, I promise. Um, Eugen? You're the next person in my uh, row from uh, left to right. Uh, I don't dare to correct something. <laughs> I feel guilty, actually. Uh, I I had the second chance to be in time, but unfortunately I failed everything. So uh, it's just conversation. Here's nothing to improve, I suppose. But actually, your speaker, <laughs> I have made uh, several, several screenshots. I, I show you a letter. It's really hilarious. <laughs> You it's mean, looking like ice cream. Yeah. My my microphone, you mean? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you when you get uh, further on the screen, like this? Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the microphone is bigger than you, and it's like <laughs> it's like your shadow, you know. And yeah, I have my uh, several screenshots. I'll okay, okay. Later. Yeah, and I have no idea what's happening. I just checked uh, feedbacks and. Um, in uh, app uh, app store or uh, kind of that yeah and uh, a lot of people had a problem with the uh, video in hangouts maybe we can change the application mm -mm. because all no. applications have problems and hang hangouts is the only flexible one so you have to install skype you have to inst and you cannot run skype like on your phone and on your laptop it will just go mad it will go bananas it will ruin the whole call so Zoom is first of all paid. Secondly, it has three steps entering. It has a connection to an application on an, on your laptop, not on the phone. You can't, I think, uh, enter it so easily. And then Discord is a local fancy thing. I mean, how can I explain like uh, those people who only have a phone, like in Cape Town, how can I explain how to use Discord? And I mean, other options are even are even less uh, less possible. So. 
it's not about I mean explaining. I mean I I I'm I'm absolutely sure people can get how to use any application. But the question is time. We start should start at seven o'clock. We start at best at seven ten, and still we don't have all people because because people are trying to. Uh, work out how to use the headphones, microphones, programs, connection, and this is with the simplest tool, with Hangouts. What we would, what we would have with uh, something more complex. I mean, of course we can go like uh, professional. We can buy some application for some money. How will we use it? I mean, it will just go absolutely uncontrollable. So no, uh, Hangouts is the most simple thing. I'm not going here for. Uh, some kind of uh, how to say local chat I'm going for massiveness I'm going for the most if, if I can say so reachability uh, I mean as many people as possible should be able to reach this call that's why hangouts is the most common tool uh, because it is Google Google is reachable by any anyone that's so my do you do you use hangouts I need to use uh, three devices <laughs> how many how many devices are you using now yeah now only one that's the answer only one uh what's happening with connection i can see uh, yeah just uh so uh, my previous two uh, aren't uh, i forgot this word damn it uh capable okay. forget this <laughs> okay reliable uh, maybe, maybe, no. maybe reliable matchable yeah uh okay compatible compatible with uh, this okay. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yeah, that, that's why we have to meet before the before the stream to to check if if it works. Um, now at least you know that your this phone is working and you can figure something out. Right, uh, Caroline, uh, what do you think? What do you feel? Oh, I thought it was great. I really enjoyed meeting you guys from Russia and hearing about that lake, which I will look it up, and the poets. Um, so that I feel sort of expanded. I've expanded my my boundaries. Um, I found, I, found I, I tried Safari. Safari was really bad, and then I went on to Firefox, which was better. That was my problem. That you like? I mean, you couldn't uh, join. Uh, ah, Firefox. That's you mean yes, the, the, yes. the browser. I'm on Firefox. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I tried Safari because it's the one I usually use. Mm -hmm. I do use Firefox too, and it was difficult. That's when I couldn't get you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not an expert in these matters, so I'm used to mm -hmm. not getting things. But, um, but I found it. I've, I've got perfect reception on this Firefox. Okay, so you are now using Firefox browser. Yes. Not Safari. Uh huh. No, and Safari didn't. I wasn't working for me. I see. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. I get it. Maybe Thank maybe you. it was just. It might have worked a bit later, but in the beginning. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Well, if it works, I mean, if it works, then it's perfect. I mean, the actually the picture is quite nice, and I I've been I've been hearing you throughout the whole call quite well, and that's the most important thing. I mean, we can't. I mean, there is no way that we'll have one hundred percent quality sound and connection because we have several people. Everyone will have problems, but what we should have is kind of flexible stability, and uh, that's what I'm aiming at. So thank you, Caroline and uh, Alisa. Yeah, Alice, what about you? So uh, now I hear in lies. Like uh, first of all, thank you, thanks uh, to Andy. Great thanks to Andy and great thanks to everybody and to Batat. Uh, but, uh, so uh, I was like, he uh, is exactly what you Andy uh, described when you talked when you were giving a when you were giving a presentation about Africa. He's very polite. He's very positive. A lot of positive 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 keep oh, he always uh, keeps smiling and it's so charming and um, I'm really happy to have such international conversa conversation and be a part of it so um, and the thing is that uh, so uh, it's my second uh, English speaking club online and for the second time uh, we um, try to find advantages in every situation uh, like uh, for the first time it was uh, quarantine time and now it's uh, like about uh, what do you love about your own country and I think for uh, our people people who live in Russia it's uh, very advantage advantages uh, uh, so it depends on our mentality but 
so uh, quarantine, so coronavirus will end, but you live uh, in some country, and this is not will end as soon as coronavirus, at least. So, and you should find advantages in every situation, especially in the place where you live. Well, that's uh, being positive, uh, not COVID-19 positive, but just positive, I mean, as a, as a, as a person. So uh, I'd like to thank all the participants. Uh, so I want to say that we definitely have to consider the new circumstances that uh, if we are going international, then we have to kind of build up, your, uh, build up our dialogue in a way that we kind of uh, ask more questions and listen more to each other, which is absolutely um, like the most essential rule here. Then uh, I hope I will be able to involve more people internationally. And uh, to those who are listening, the, who are listening to, to, to this now or in recording, so please uh, let me know if you would like to join because we actually, I, I want this to be flexible. Like maybe people will be able to talk to, uh, to us for 30 minutes and then we will just change the person and it can be, can be like our offline club, which is always in uh, dynamics. It's like people come and people going. And uh, I think that's uh, what I'm also uh, seeing as a target of these of, uh, online meetings. So uh, the next one, as I said, is going to be after tomorrow. So on Saturday, April 18, uh, I've, also, I've already invited some people, so, uh, but still there are some places and uh, I'd like to maybe uh, have another international club there. And uh, the next one will be on Monday, and so it will go. So Monday, Thursday, Saturday, if I'm not uh, deadly exhausted, the club shall happen. And uh, yeah, so I appreciate, I appreciate, I thank you all, and I hope that it was a nice uh, experience and that it cheered you up a little bit and uh, hope to see you very soon. I will now process the recording and uh, put it on YouTube and as soon as it is uh, completed I'll, I'll forward you the link to the video so that you could see how it looked and what it was like. So now I'm going to go on a break for 15 minutes and then the stream will continue. I'll be playing some game I think. Uh, and guys thank you very much for the conversation. See you. Please write me anytime and we shall uh, discuss our next gathering. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you, Angie. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.